Hey guys, this is Tom, in case you couldn't tell. This is the GitHub repo that we'll have. You can see that we've expanded the tools install and setup to make it uh, easier and more explicit on each of the major tools we want you to get comfortable with. I assure you that learning this basic tool set is going to set you up very well. And after getting the great feedback from you guys, we were very motivated to create better uh, install instructions and even videos. So when you go to this section now, you're going to find installation or usage instructions for Google Colab. Google Colab, you don't install. We'll talk about that more here in a minute. But even for Python, and why? Yeah, installing Python's not hard, but maybe it would help if we showed you how to set up the environment variables because that can really hang you up. And then there'll be one, a separate one now for Python virtual environments, uh, Git for Windows, and even VS Code. That um, This one's going to be a little longer, but super important, super good integrated development environment. That is an IDE, and Guy's going to go over that one. I want to show you Google Colab in this video. So I'll go into that directory, and there's a markdown file. That's what MD stands for. It's just a very slick way to do some nice text. There'll be more below this point that you're viewing, but I just want you to click here to get to the example space. I've left it blank so you can uh, see me creating things in real time. So here in our shared directory, if you go to machine learning pipeline code, that's public, but you can only view the files. However, you can make copies of them, and I encourage you to do that and put those copies in your own locations uh, for Google Drive. So I'm going to go into this directory. It's empty right now. And <clears throat> so we're in Google Drive, and you're in the directory I've shared for the class. But we want to create a new, and we'll have to go to more, Google Collaboratory. And I'm going to create and share this. Now this is really important. We're not using a Python installation on your machine. You'll see that I put this before a Python installation on your machine. And I'm assuming most of you have Python installed. Like I said, I'm going to go through the install so I can show some details. But you're using a Python installation on Google's servers. And this is great because since you're using Google's servers, you can check out Google's graphical processing units, GPUs. You can even check out their TPUs. Now, we don't need to do that yet, but when we get to a point in the class where that's important, we'll show that. <clears throat> so I'm going to just create a file right now called uh, Simple Example. And I'll leave this just as it is as we develop it. So right now, I might do something like uh, import math and import numpy. And I'll go ahead and even import random, just some random stuff. Now the great thing about Colab, or any notebook system really, by the way, if you're using Jupyter Notebooks, that does uh, use an installation on your machine. But this is the advantage to Colab. Let's say you're at a coffee shop and you only have your tablet, but you've figured out a way to run a keyboard and mouse on your tablet. Well, now you can open up Co uh, Colab and use Google's servers to run Python on a tablet or something that you don't even have Python installed on. So let's just leave these import statements in a separate cell. And you can see, as I hover over the bottom of the cell, I can create some text, or I can create some code. And I'm going to go ahead and create some text. And I'm going to just type in markdown. And I'm going to say uh, examples. I'm just making this up, by the way. And you can see it's showing it for us. And I hover down here, and now I'm going to create some code. And now I have some markdown, and it's really clean. So up here, oh, how is that? Nice. I can also add above. And I'll put some additional markdown. 
uh, just to call this simple uh, example file. Again, no big deal what we call it, but um, and now, uh, oh, you can, once you create these, you can move them around too. So I'll go in and run that to make sure this stuff's going to import, and it does. By the way, the first cell you run typically, typically takes a little bit. So let's do something super simple so we know everything's working. And I'll go in ahead and run that cell. And great. Oh, I don't like that, so I'll correct it and rerun it. No big deal. Okay, let's just do one list instantiation. Um, I'll go ahead and add some text and say list, uh, excuse me, not list instantiation, list comprehension. Okay, and I want to put some code below that. And I'm going to just show what it would look like if I wasn't doing a list instance in, excuse me, a list comprehension. I would have to do something like this. My list equals some empty list. And then I would say, uh, for example, for I in range, uh, let's just do 100 for fun. And then I'm saying um, my list dot append I and with three nine um, it's going to turn this into a float automatically. By the way, so and I'm not a, now if I did it this way in in an older version of Python, it would force this to become a float as it appends it to my list. But I'm just going to show you that they've I think everyone just got frustrated with always having to do a type conversion, so they do this now. And then after this loop, we'll go ahead and print my list. And then we'll run this. And you can see, yes, we get 100 numbers incremented by tenths uh, of, a, of, a, of one. But um, now, because this is coming up and some of you might not have seen it. Um, let's say this is your list because this is what you would prefer to do. We can kind of write the above shorthand. We can say uh, x divided by 10 for x in range 100. Now you can see that still has all the elements above, but what this is saying is for x, for x in range 100, I want you to put x divided by 10 in this array. It's literally shorthand for everything we did up here. And just like we did up there, let's go ahead and print your list. And you can see there's an auto completion. Let me show you that I can just take advantage of that and it'll fill it in. And it gives you all sorts of nice hints too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run that. And there's our simple code. But um, let's do something a little fancy now. Let's uh, go into the first lesson we're going to go into just to show some more usage for Google Colab. So I'm going to um, close this um, right here. And I'm going to create yet another file another notebook I should say and I'm going to call it uh, fake data one so we change that name right up here and I'm just going to be copying and pasting uh, some code from another place that you can't see so you don't think I'm wicked fast at typing, although I can type pretty fast, not quite that fast. So I, I'm just being disciplined in a good way, in my opinion, to put the different groups of code in their separate blocks. And this time I'm going to do two list instantiations. 
excuse me, list comprehensions. I keep saying that. Um, and now I'm going to do some uh, matplotlib statements. We will teach y'all matplotlib as we go, and uh, you'll find it to be quite elegant. And then the final thing we want to do is since we're going to create this fake data, we would like to save it and use it in another program. And I'm going to, I know this won't work, so I'm going to clean that up right now to show you what's going to happen. So we're going to create some linear data and put it in a CSV file. And uh, we're using a context manager. That's what it's called when you do this. Whenever you see with some function and some uh, instantiation of that variable for this class of open in Python. By the way, I know this language may sound a little confusing, but you're learning to speak Python and it'll get better. Um, I'm just going to, for every, um, for, for just some dummy variable i in the range of the length of x, which we create up here, I'm going to write a line of x comma y. This is just, I'm formatting a string inside that string when we have curly brackets. I'm writing each of these array elements that I created up here. We're also going to look at a plot of it uh, before we run this one to make sure everything looks good and then we'll write that to file and I'll show you how to look at it. So let's start up here. We're just going to import uh, matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and import random. Now here doing something a little different um, the same thing we did before in the list comprehension in the other file but now the y is going to be 2 times x plus some noise and I create the fake noise with random dot random and random calls a random variable between 0 and 1 but I want some of them to be negative. And so I, I'm going from negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And then I'm going to multiply that by 2. So it's actually going from negative 1 to positive 1. And so for x in x, which we've already created up here, I'm going to say 2 times x plus this fake noise that I'm creating right here. Okay, let's, we've run that one, and the way you know which ones have run is uh, they have a number in them. So we'll run this one now, and that's great. Um, now that data is created, let's make sure. Now I'm running this one, and you can see the plot right there below that statement. And then I want to write that to file. Oh, but how do I see that? Right here is a little file manager for your session of Colab. And there is our file. Now, this will go away when the session closes. This isn't permanent stuff. There is a link, a way to link it to your Google Drive. And if you want to do that, I can create another training video or you can go figure out how to do it on your own. But if you wanted to preserve this beyond this session, you can download it. Um, and just put it on your local system and then import it another time later. Now, what if I wanted to import a file? Well, let's do that. I'm going to go in ahead and close this file manager. I'm going to go in ahead and close this fake data. And now I'm going to um, open a new collab, but actually I'm going to do it uh, in, in other words, a notebook file, but I want to upload it from somewhere. And so I'm going to go get it from Dennis's book. So I go to the place that I store all my materials. By the way, I want you all to take careful notice of this. I'm going to an importantly named directory in my cloud drive stuff. Then I'm going to machine learning AI materials. I just want you to notice all these directories. This is all stuff I have for free. If you're ever needing a book or 
uh, course notes or data sets that I've stored. I, I've just got so much stuff here and I'm happy to share it if you can't find it yourself for free on the web. But I'm going to go down here to my Transformers directory, book by Dennis, book code, and I'm going to go to chapter one and I'm just going to load this particular um, file and there it is. And um, I can now open this and it's a little confused now, but I just said, no, it's, it's Google Colab. And boom, now I have Dennis's well-crafted markdown cells and code for his first example from his book. And that's more fun than we should be allowed to have. Um, so what have we gone over? Um, we've gone over uh, how to create a file from two files from scratch we uh, created a graph in there. We created some markdown uh, text. Um, we even wrote some data to a file that we could then download. And let's go ahead and do that uh, download so we can see where it would go and what it would look like. So I'll rerun these cells real quick. Oh, this isn't the one I wanted. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll go back and we wanted to do this fake data one because that's where we created the fake data. Okay, so we import this again. We run those. Now that data exists. We'll look at it and sure enough it replotted. By the way, I'm going to show you something. Oh, it's still there because I haven't closed this browser. It still knows it's there. So I didn't even have to rerun these, but I'm going to download that and I'm just going to go put it somewhere on my system that I know I'd like to save it for my class. Obviously, it'd be a good idea if you kept all your class stuff together and I'm just going to put it at this level for now. And uh, excuse me, I wanted it to be at this level. And so it saved it there and let's go look at it in my file manager. I'll go over to that place and uh, here it is and I can do it look at it in the preview here's the uh, yeah my system's trying to take control there I have a wicked accidental double click on my mouse so I just want to look at it and there's my X data comma my Y data and so we preserve that for another time and we could upload that to be used and read from in Colab. And we'll show you how to do these kind of things, but again, this is just a quick intro to get you familiar with how to use Colab. And um, it's a great tool. Um, we definitely do want you to be skilled at notebooks, but not only notebooks. And that's why Guide's going to be doing an important video on installing and setting up and using VS Code a little bit. All right. See you in class.